Filipino migrant workers like Randy De Vera are filling in the shortage of truck drivers in Europe. There is an estimated shortage of 400,000 truck drivers across the European Union. Truck drivers are badly needed to transport goods across European borders. Cargo trucks move about 75% of all inland freight throughout the 27 countries that comprise the EU. The transport of goods across the massive land area that is the continent of Europe is crucial in the supply chain. So there aren't enough truck drivers in the EU. What's that got to do with the Philippines? The truck driver shortage has gotten so bad that European countries are sourcing truck drivers from as far away as the Philippines. Filipino truck drivers are hired from the Philippines through recruitment agencies or from the Middle East through social media. Whichever way they are hired, the Filipino truck drivers enter Europe through Eastern European countries like Poland or Latvia. Transport companies set up operations in these EU member states where wages are lower. They circumvent labor laws and reduce costs by paying low wages to their employees, but operating only in Western European countries. In practice, this means that a driver hired from a low-wage country in Eastern Europe or the Philippines can be paid as little as 500 euros a month. Meanwhile, a Western European driver would be paid an estimated 3,000 euros for doing the same job. This allows transport companies to maximize profits in three ways. First, they operate all over the EU and charge high fees for their services. Second, they force truck drivers to bypass laws and drive beyond regulated driving hours to make as many deliveries as possible. Third, they minimize costs by paying drivers low wages and not providing them accommodations. Either way, it is migrant truck drivers like Randy De Vera who pay the price. Many truck drivers are forced to eat, sleep, and live in their trucks. For Filipino truck drivers, this means making their trucks their home for months at a time. Bathrooms are port outlets on the road. Showers are in gas stations where they have to pay a fee. Resting areas are parking lots all across the European Union. Labor and transport groups have called this a form of human trafficking for the purpose of labor exploitation. Authorities in Denmark and the Netherlands do not agree. Last year, the Danish government dismissed a case of human trafficking against transport giant Kurt Bayer. The company hired 26 truck drivers, mostly from Sri Lanka and the Philippines, and forced them to live in what was described as slum-like conditions, with no proper heating or toilet facilities. Similarly, the Dutch government dismissed a case of human trafficking filed by nine Filipino truck drivers against their employer, Mustafa T, owner of King's Transport. The problem is that international laws that define human trafficking make it so difficult to prove. Gaps in legislation don't help. There are no existing criminal laws in Denmark and the Netherlands to prosecute labor abuses. All this makes it very difficult to punish unscrupulous employers like Kurt Bayer and King's Transport for their blatant labor abuses. So what's being done about all this? In the Netherlands, lawmakers are lobbying to broaden the definition of labor exploitation to make it easier to punish worker abuse. In Denmark, companies are stepping in where authorities have fallen short. They're hitting Kurt Bayer where it will hurt the most its bottom line. Several prominent Danish companies have refused to do business with Kurt Bayer as a company that has been implicated in labor abuses and exploitation. The truck driver shortage is predicted to get worse as current truck drivers ease into retirement. Europe will continue to look to countries like the Philippines to fill in this labor supply gap. The Philippines must act now to ensure that truck drivers do not become the new face of human trafficking in Europe.